Hey everyone, this is Mike, and I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't waste your money on the NASCAR racing experience. So, when I was younger, I was a huge NASCAR fan. I just love everything about the cars, and I've always been into uh, speed and going fast and racing, and just never really got to do a lot of it. You know, when I saw these NASCAR, the Richard Petty driving experience was the big one, right? Where you pay some money and they'll let you drive a car around a track. But that was so cool. But it was kind of expensive and just never really, I didn't live near a track. So I just never did it. A couple of weeks ago, I finally decided, hey, it's time to do that. I got the means. I got Vegas not too far away now. I'm going to go sign up. I went online and I was doing some research. I was watching some videos. And uh, I finally decided, all right, I'm going to do it. I plunked down the money. It was about $1,100 plus travel getting there. So I ended up buying the checkered flag experience, which is three eight minute sessions. You know, I was like I, one eight minute session just wasn't going to cut it. If I'm going to go travel someplace, well, I want to get my money's worth. So I decided to go with the checkered flag experience. So it's a total of 24 minutes driving. Now from some of the other videos, I had seen that it was like the, the eight minute sessions basically start when you roll out of the pits and end when you stop in the pits. So it's not really like a full eight minutes of, of at speed driving, but it is what it is, right? They make several attempts at trying to get you to sign up for their videos. And they range between 150 to $200 for in-car videos. I uh, decided to take that money and purchase, which I had the idea from another YouTuber that uh, did this with their driving experience. I bought some uh, action cam sunglasses, HD. They have a, a tiny little camera there. I don't know if you can see it. And I just wore these instead of paying them 100. I mean, these were 150 bucks. So, and I can use them again instead of just getting video from their car so after i had purchased and there's no refunds even uh, for inclement weather you have to just uh, reschedule i continued doing research and found a couple of complaints and the complaints were mostly that after the nascar racing experience bought out the richard petty driving experience they changed a lot of stuff so it used to be that uh, you would get in the car with an instructor and the instructor would have control over the rev limiter. And this would dictate how fast you could go. Um, and as the instructor in the car felt you were doing okay, he would raise the rev limiter and tell you you could go faster. They don't do that anymore. They give you a headset and a radio that you, uh, well, they give you a helmet with a headset in it. And there's a spotter and he just tells you, you can go faster and faster. One of the other things I saw was that the uh, maximum RPM that they allowed, and that, there's not a whole lot of videos online. There are some YouTube videos. You can see the older videos, the RPMs are a lot higher. Not a lot higher, but I mean, they'd race into about 6,000. In the new NASCAR experience, it's only 5,000 or 54. Uh, and I'll get to that in a minute. So I flew from Phoenix to Vegas. It was actually pouring in Phoenix that morning. Um, so I was very worried that I was gonna waste the trip there. Uh, fortunately, it worked out. I get there, there really isn't anybody else there. I had a nine o'clock appointment. They did have a shuttle from one of the casinos, the Westgate Casino, I believe. And that was good. I only had to Uber from the airport to the Westgate instead of all the way to the track. So I get there, there's nobody there. I waited around quite some time in an empty room until uh, one other person showed up that was going to drive and they finally did the safety meeting uh, which was basically watching a video which half the stuff wasn't even applicable he later would tell us that oh don't worry about that we do it this way now so we finally get out to the track uh they buck they they get us a, a helmet get strapped in okay. all right so we're going to so switch to the, the in-car camera now it's from it's the glasses yeah, I just got into the car and he's given me an overview of what's going to happen. I, here I'm realizing that there's wings on the side of the seat that are really kind of dig into the side of your arms there. The guy in front of me is going to do an eight minute session. He actually got the same package that I did. So he's going to do an eight minute session. They're going to push me up. 
<laughs> uh, basically, you just got to wait there eight minutes until the guy comes back. Giving him the thumbs up, saying I understand, because I'm trying not to let him see my glasses that have a camera on it because they specifically state that there are no cameras allowed in the vehicle. Uh, obviously, so that they can sell you their $200 video package. So I'm just kind of looking around at this point, just checking it out and uh, messing around with stuff. We're going to fast forward here a little bit. So here I'm sitting in the car. It's only been a couple minutes later. The guy in front of me started his vehicle. Uh, I still got to wait here eight minutes while he does his uh, laps. And they're going to push me up into his spot for whatever reason. I don't know why they don't just let you take off from there. There wasn't really anybody else around. So they're, they're both checking. Just so you know, when you get back after your second session, uh, we're going to go ahead and flip that switch so that way you're 5400 RPM. Nice. So what he just said was, and this was something I didn't realize, since I bought three sessions, uh, the, two fir the first two sessions will be rev limited to 5000 RPM. And there's an MSD box on the dash there with a switch um, that uh, they can flip and it goes to 5400 RPM. So it allows you to go a little bit faster. A little bit faster. So I'll just let you hear the car going by a little bit here. Um, keep in mind it's his first lap so he's not going super fast. Not that you ever go super fast. So just looking around, um, you got some gauges on the on the dash and uh, in the pocket on the left side. There's a there's a radio that you're connected to. There's a button on the steering wheel that allows you to key the radio up so you can talk to the spotter and uh, a gear lever. Not too much uh, going on in these cars. Uh, it smelled terrible. It smelled like uh, gasoline, and uh, it was not very comfortable to sit in there. Um, like I said, those wings, they got wings on the side and they, uh, you know, maybe if the seat was made specifically for you, it would be different, but, um, you know, they have different cars that have, uh, different size seats and different, um, I guess distances between the seat and the pedals because they're, they're not adjustable. So the wings on the side of the seat really dug into the side of your arms. But you didn't really notice when you're driving around at all um, because you had your hands on the wheel. And only it's only really a factor when your hands aren't on the wheel. So we'll skip ahead here to where he is coming in behind me after his eight laps. So they had a person doing a ride along. And you'll see on the right side there, you'll see the original guy. He's on his last lap. And the ride along is actually going to pass him. just gives you an idea of how not fast the guy's going. So he's going to come in, uh, I believe, after this lap. And so they're going to start prepping me and getting ready. One of the guys is going to pop his head in and give me some instructions here. Let's listen in. All right, buddy, it's going to be extremely loud right now. I'm going to plug this in. Ignore okay. everything he says until he calls for a radio check in car 1B. I got the right, right car. to a white line. Go ahead and cross over that white line and come down the center of pit road. So this is where All I forget right, to press the clutch. Into neutral and slow it down. Put on the clutch. Slow down a little more, a little slower, a little slower, a little slower. So you can actually hear the radio. Into the glasses because the microphone is on the glasses. Radio check for Mike. Copy. So he's talking to me now. Alright, Mike, let's go ahead and roll out. Give that car about 2,000 RPMs and he's off the clutch. Basically not going to hear it any anymore uh, because the car is just too loud. 
So he's telling me to bring it up to 3,000 RPM and basically bring it up to 3,000 RPM and get into fourth gear. So right now I'm kind of experiencing um, the fact that the car wants to turn left really badly. Uh, just kind of getting a feel and the gear shifter as well was uh, very weird. Um, first, second was fine. When it goes into third it was like really short and I wasn't sure it was in gear yet. Uh, but basically it tells me on the, ra on the radio to cross over the right line and uh, maintain I think 4200 RPM or so. So the spotter's basically looking at you, observing you, uh, making sure that you're hitting the marks on the track, which in the safety meeting they told you not to, uh, don't worry about them. <laughs> and it's, it was all kind of weird. But So we're going to skip ahead to uh, my third session where they turned on the 5400 RPM limit. And this is where it's going to get a little interesting going to do some math. You can see there was quite a bit of jump in the speed between my first lap and my last lap. You can hear me hit the rev limiter right there. So at this point I've done a handful of laps. Uh, I'm on my third eight minute session. I've done well enough where the spotter has been comfortable with me basically running off the rev limiter. Uh, I'm at 5400 RPM. The banking at Las Vegas was steeper than I thought it was going to be. The turn in at these speeds it was it was very unnatural to stay in the gas and you know you, you had to stay in the gas to maintain the speed. Um, you drop to 5,000 or lower uh, if you didn't basically floor it through the turns. Um, you had to back off on the straightaways, otherwise you would hit the rev limiter, and uh, they really didn't want you riding the rev limiter down the uh, down the straightaways. So my fastest lap is coming up, and we're going to use this video as proof as to how the NASCAR racing experience lies to you and it's false advertising. So I went around this last lap and I tried very hard to keep the 5400 RPM just right under that rev limiter. Now you have to floor the gas around the turns to keep to maintain the speed then you gotta back off the gas on the straightaways. If the RPM did not change much throughout the whole lap and my speed did not change much throughout the whole lap and if my speed didn't change much that means my average speed is going to be very close to my top speed. We know the length of the track is 1.5 miles and using math we can calculate my average speed based on the time it takes for me to go around a lap. So my fastest lap is going to come up and we're going to we're going to time it using the video. Now when the real drivers do it in the real NASCARs, they do laps in the 28 to 29 second range. They have an average speed of 195 and a top speed of over 200. Keep that in mind. I'm, I'm only halfway around the track by the time they're done doing a full lap, which is just insane. I could not imagine going around in circles, pulling 3Gs in the turns when it's 120 degrees or more in the car for three and a half hours or whatever it is. All right, so we got 45.6 seconds for a lap. So you calculate the average speed using a, the formula of speed equals distance divided by the time. So it's 1.5 miles divided by 45.6 seconds. Uh, you can do the math. I use the speed distance time calculator online, and it comes up with an average speed of 118 miles an hour. So 118 miles an hour is, I wasn't very happy with that. Um, my speed did not change much throughout the whole lap, so I couldn't have gone more than, you know, 
120, 125 maybe. I mean, if that, because my, you can watch it again, the speed did not vary very much. So what really just irks me is the fact that they give you a completion certificate. And that completion certificate that I got says I went 162 miles an hour. Now, there is absolutely no way that I went that fast on this track, according to this video. So if you dive deep into the NASCAR Racing Experience website, in the FAQ, all the way at the bottom, you will find a question that says, how will I know what my top speed was? Now, I'm putting it up on the screen, I'm not going to read it, but basically it says that they take the average speed and then they add to it to get your proximate top speed uh, that they think you're doing at the end of the straightaways. But as you clearly saw in the video, that it was limited to 5400 RPM and I did exactly 5400 RPM all the way around the track. So there is absolutely no way that whatever calculation that they are using is accurate uh, by any means. I just think getting a certificate that says I went way faster than I actually did uh, is a gross misrepresentation and uh, essentially false advertising. People are going to go and, and show their friends and say, oh, I went 160 miles an hour when in reality they went 120. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope it was informative uh, to people that are looking at doing this and maybe saving them some money. Thanks a lot and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.